We're Mykonos. Uh, we're a Silicon Valley-based uh, company uh, trying to create a, a platform for uh, a new way of thinking about uh, delivery, ex vivo delivery. Um, and we utilize controllable silicon nanoneedles to actually do that. And so I'm going to talk about that and uh, being agnostic to cell type and, and the type of payload that, uh, that people are interested in delivering into cells. Um, you know, it, there's a thought exercise here where, you know, what if you could transfect or transduce any fragile cell type um, with high viability and efficiency, um, being agnostic to payloads, so large payloads, um, multiplexing multiple payloads at the same time um, at a single cell level precision um, with unprecedented control, so the idea of controlling the amount of payload that goes into a single cell. Um, so we here at Mykonos um, actually have the ability to do that, and we have preclinical data uh, demonstrating delivery into various fragile cell types, be it immune cells, uh, different types of stem cells, other primary cells as well. Um, greater than 95% viability, greater than 70% efficiency, uh, loading multiple cargos up to 100 KB. I know with a lot of viral vectors, you're limited with size. Um, that's not necessarily an issue for us. Um, On to nanoneedles, and I'll describe the technology in the next slide. Um, but the whole point of this is single cell level nanoneedle injection of payloads. Um, and then this idea of dose control. So this idea of finely tuned dose control um, and targeted delivery. So if you want to deliver directly into the nucleus, obviously for some DNA payloads, um, that's possible um, um, with our system. Um, and so our vision, our goal, our mission really is to, to really build a future of cell therapies on a, on a silicon chip. Um, and, and the way we're doing that is really creating a proprietary cell engineering platform uh, using scalable silicon technology for hyper-precise ex vivo delivery of any type of molecule into any type of cell. And you can think of our, our platform as consisting of three core technologies uh, working synergistically together. Um, the first one, first technology that I've alluded to earlier is this idea of a, a nano-engineered silicon needle array chip, um, where we have controllable nano needles in a, in a, in a small, you know, the si a, a chip, you know, one centimeter by one centimeter chip. Um, the second technology is actually how do you obtain single cells? And so we've developed a chip that um, traps single cells into specific nodes, and you pair the nano needle chip with the cell trapping chip, and so you get single cell level injection, but massively parallelized. Um, the, the needles that we fabricate in-house are not hollow, so the payload doesn't go through the, the needle, mainly because of two reasons. Number one, it's much harder to mass manufacture hollow structures like that. And two, you always run into the issue of clogging at that, at that scale. And so because of that, we decided to go the solid needle route. And because we went the solid needle route, we had to actually develop a surface chemistry on the needle to facilitate attraction of a payload and then release of the payload once the needle is inside the cell. And so we use an aptamer-based surface chemistry to actually facilitate that. And we're fortunate that one of our advisors is Carolyn Bertozzi at Stanford, who was uh, recently just won the Nobel Prize uh, uh, last year. And so she's, we, she, with her collaboration, we've patented an approach to actually facilitate that attraction and release of the payload in a very controllable way. Um, just to kind of compare ourselves with, I think, the gold standards in the field, be it viral vectors or electroporation, um, there are you know, very, you know, there are different categories you can look, look at, whether it's safety, cost, cargo capacity, manufacturing capacity. And I think with our unique approach, we, we bring a, a set of value propositions that are not necessarily um, prevalent in, in those other strategies. Um, we always have high viability. Um, it, especially in, in fragile cell types, immune cells and stem cells. This idea of dose control, um, because we are at the single cell level, we have that tunability at that single cell level, which brings in a more consistent approach altogether if, you're, you, know, if you have a pool of cells that, that, that you're looking at. And obviously high viability efficiency, um, nuclear delivery, so we can, we can modify our surface chemistry in a way um, where we can only deliver things into the nucleus and not just dump them in the cytoplasm of a cell, so we have that ability. 
I was mentioning large cargo. So, you know, uh, you know, greater than, you know, I think lentiviruses have a, a limitation of around 11 to 12 KB. You know, we can do 10x that, um, delivering, you know, much larger cargos um, in, in a plasmid or linear form. Um, multiplexing uh, multiple payloads at the same time. Um, and then really making sure that we have the ability to scale and, and be automated at the same time. Silicon, to our adva take, taking advantage of silicon and that automation um, uh, processes. Um, again, our goal is to really be a scalable cell engineering to really automate target, targeted delivery. And if you think about it, all of these kind of value propositions that are, are shown here, in fact, these, this is an SEM image of our needles themselves. Um, our, real, our goal really is to be an integrated solution from R&D through manufacturing. You can imagine either cell or gene therapy developers don't want to switch midway in terms of their delivery process, right? And so our goal is to really address multiple issues, multiple um, uh, problems within a single drug development pipeline and really be that enabling technology, um, kind of that one-stop shop um, for cell and gene therapy developers. Um, you know, this conference is a great opportunity for us to really unlock um, what we call the killer apps, those opportunities that really take advantage of single cell level delivery and that precision that we bring to the table. Um, here are some advantages of our, 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 our silicon needle-based delivery platform, and we're fortunate that a lot of these are um, our, our current partnerships that we have either with large pharma or small biotechs. Uh, one is uh, intraneedle multiplexing, so delivery of multiple components for advanced gene editing. I know there's been a number of talks on multiple components and kind of the next generation gene editing strategies. And so we have the ability to kind of, you know, not just the Cas9 or, you know, the guide RNA, but all of them at the same time, the DNA donor as well. Um, IPSCs, there's been a number of talks, exciting talks. Um, we have a lot of data on, on editing efficiency and, and viability. Again, with this gentle approach, even I, you know, I would argue IPSCs are one of the most fragile cell types, um, and, and so we don't have that viability issues that maybe other strategies might. Um, sequential editing, it's a short cycle time, so there's the, the recovery time for um, our, our, our needle-based approach is, you know, we're not talking in electroporation, you gotta wait sometimes 48, 72 hours for the cells to recover after they've been electroporated. You know, we're talking, you know, one hour here for, for recovery for our, our, our system. So that, uh, that ability to actually sequentially edit um, is something that we can do. Um, large payloads, I was talking about greater than 100 KB. We announced a partnership um, with a company called Neochromosome, which is a subsidiary of OpenTrons, to actually deliver 100 KB plasmids into the nucleus of iPSCs. And so there's a lot of things there that uh, you know, other technologies might not be able to do, and so we have that ability to do that. And then just think about, because we're at that single cell level precision, we have better CMC package, better, better data packages, because we can track kind of how each individual cell is progressing. Um, here's just a kind of some examples of the data that we have. Um, this is a, a simple experiment where we can deliver GFP, a plasmid expressing GFP, a plasmid expressing M cherry um, at the same time. Uh, so this idea of multiplexing payloads um, kind of demonstrates that high level of co-delivery into the same cells. We can do even more than two, um, but this is a, I like the images here, so that's why we're showing that. Um, Dose control, so this is an interesting experiment where we, um, there are kind of different input parameters that go into our, our system, right? So you can imagine some of them being the concentration of payloads gonna change the amount of payload that gets into a cell. That's not unique to us, um, but what is unique to us is the residence time of a needle within a cell. So let's say with, instead of five seconds of the needle uh, being in, inside the cell, maybe it's one minute. So more payload in that instance is actually gonna be delivered into the cell, but that all, of, all of that is controllable. Depth of penetration, the needles themselves are about 30 microns in length, and so you can imagine going, instead of going one micron in, you can go three microns in, so the access to payload 
changes. And so you have that, that dose kind of tunability, which I think is really important in certain applications. And so this demonstrates that we can actually do this in a linear way of, of showcasing the fact that we, we have the ability of, 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 of this idea of dose control. Um, we can deliver RNPs, so this is our primary CD8 positive uh, T cells, um, comparing ourselves to nucleofection in the percent reduction of PD-1 in this particular case, um, and then comparing viability as well. So I think we, um, uh, there's, there's more reduction in, with our system and, and better viability compared to a, a nucleofection strategy. And then finally, in this particular case, um, large plasmid. So this is just a 15 kb plasmid. And again, with something like lipofectamine, you don't have that ability um, to, to, or it's, it's not very efficient in terms of delivery. These are HSCs as a, as a model cell. Um, and, and we don't really detract our, our efficiency, kind of that 70, 70% range um, without compromising viability. This is just a, a you know, sample data sets that, that we have. We also have a, a lot of efficiency and viability data in, in primary immune cells and iPSCs, uh, nuclear delivery as well, and then mRNA deliver, delivery in T cells. And all of these are, are based off of the, you know, why are we doing these cell types? It's, it's you know, the partnerships that we currently have and, and the asks that we're, that, that we're getting. Um, so what's next for us? Um, we're deploying our, our research use only MVP to select partners uh, later this year. We're pretty excited about that. It's a big milestone for us. Um, we have six active partnerships right now, um, and so expanding upon those is a, is a priority for us. Um, and then really building towards that, that not only the comp uh, uh, more advanced chip, um, but a GMP compatible product as well. Because again, our, our, our vision, our goal as a company is to really be that integrated solution from R&D through manufacturing. This is just a, a video of how this actually works, where you have the cells that come in, um, the needle that is um, loaded with your payload kind of pokes the, the cell, and the cells can, can be released in actually in a very um, sophisticated way as well. Um, we're fortunate to have an exemplary scientific um, advisory board, uh, Irv Weissman, uh, one of the godfathers of uh, stem cell biology. Um, Carolyn Bertozzi, who I was mentioning earlier, um, just won the Nobel Prize, has really helped us in terms of our surface chemistry. And then Cassie Nee, who's a, a you know, solid tumor T cell um, professor at, at, at MD Anderson as well. Um, these are the, the employees that have done all the work, so, so really amazing team. And it's, you, can, you can see just the, the different technical skill sets that come together to, to create a company like this. You know, backgrounds in microfluidics, you know, electrical engineers, chemists, biologists, uh, systems engineers. So kind of putting together, the, our, one of our, the name of our game is collaboration. And speaking of collaboration, uh, you know, we're actively looking for new partnerships, new opportunities for us to demonstrate our, our value propositions and capabilities. Uh, Jake Lesnick is here, who's our head of BD. So um, at the reception or, or after the meeting, if you want to get in touch with either myself or him, um, please go ahead and do so. Um, we're, we're excited about the technology that we bring to the table, and I think we, we can add a lot of value for, um, for a lot of CGT developers and, and, and therapeutics companies. Uh, with that, uh, I'd like to thank everyone for joining. I know it's the, the last talk of the day, but um, hopefully, again, our goal is to, to really build the future of cell therapies on a chip, and we look forward to, to, to chatting with all of you. So thanks. <laughs>